Folks, we're going to start the 6 o'clock uh, meeting. We'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Way ball. Yes. I just want to begin the uh, meeting by saying it is being recorded once again this evening, so nothing has changed. Um, and we do have an online option. Is there anybody on? Green. Mr. Green. Yeah. Paul, how you doing? Can you raise that volume a little bit? Just keep talking. Yep. One more time. There you go. That's fine. Okay. okay. Okay, so we'll do roll calls for everything. I'll initiate those as need be. Um, second thing, public comments. Mr. Yes, Acer. I think the public comments in the middle of the meeting, in the beginning of the meeting, is not uh, legal. I think you, uh, when you railroad things through, and after the meeting, nobody has a chance to say anything to it. You just want it in advance so you can just bypass everybody's opinion. So when you railroad things through and somebody has something to say about it, I think it's uh, illegal the way you do it. I've protested that before and I will protest it every meeting. Okay. You know, we'll follow up, you know, I have no problem following up with the solicitor's office. I mean, this has been in place for at least four years. No, it hasn't. I will say, uh, I it's, it's, it's usually at the end of the meetings and you guys uh, basically have no idea what you're doing. And all of a sudden, it comes up because of the new management of the uh, airport. And you, you really got to know, why would you do it now when somebody can't complain about something that you railroaded through at this past meeting? I'll, I'll just say, and I, Paul Green is online. Well, I believe you were the uh, chair when we implemented this uh, approximately four years ago. I think either Snuff was still the uh, um, manager at the time. That's right. When the new well, management well, took well, over, well, is when you changed well, it. Robert Snuff, you mean? No. That's when the new management took over, okay, well, you I changed it. Ace, let's, let's, I want to hear from him. Go. No, Paul, Paul, do you remember, I'm just curious, what's your recollection of when we began the uh, comments at the beginning? Was that the recommendation? Okay. I'll circle back. Okay. I was just going to say, it's not uncommon, and again, I think you'll see other municipalities do it this way, but it's usually public comment for items not otherwise on the agenda. I think then... We, as a commission and the chair, you know, kind of being the parliamentarian for the meeting, has the responsibility to make sure that when we're discussing an, an item, if the public wants to weigh in, I think that's the discretion of the chair to allow <coughs> the conversation. But that's that's a common practice. But I think you know, the comment, it, it's you know, we need to make sure the public feels like their comments are heard. So that's a different issue. But I think yeah. it's pretty commonplace to see public comments. I'll stop of a meeting, but we can certainly double back. And no, I'll double back. But again, I, I believe you know there's a place in time. What what uh, Commissioner uh, Henry was talking about. I don't think the commission wants to, for every single topic that comes up every night, to open it up to. A, well, why not? Uh, well, because that's not the role of the commission. It doesn't but, roll with you. Well, it doesn't roll with the public. Well. And I'm just speaking for myself. The role of this commission is oversight on certain areas of the operations of this airport. Um, as far as accountability on an issue by issue basis to the public, I don't know if that's a uh, tenable. Uh, well, it always has been, and I've been here for 20 years. So all of a sudden it got changed a few years ago. And I think that is just BS, gentlemen. And it's, uh, it's just like 
Well, you, you come up with a, uh, a, a uh, subject matter and that the public is going, uh, I'm, I'm not really, you know, you, you want some more, and now you just bury yourselves in, in this rule, and I think it's wrong. I hear you. I think Paul is trying to speak. Go ahead, Commissioner Green. I'm just wondering if we allocate enough time for this public comment. Yeah, I think we have. You know, Ace, I hear you. I'll go back to the solicitor's office and no, we'll discuss. Don't. No, no, you don't, because okay. you haven't. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on to the next person who has a, a comment. Tom and David said it does like he says, but the airport always did the way you say it. Always. It's been that way since I can remember. It's, you know, all the papers that get you all that stuff there. I mean, I think at, at, at a high level, in theory, I think what where our intent here is public comment for items not otherwise on the agenda. Well, that's how Tom and There, there are times it. when, at the discretion of the chair, there's clearly public interest. We should be, you know, make sure that you guys get to weigh in. I mean, I'm just thinking of the last meeting, we're very well it through. We didn't take any action. We read, we accepted minutes, we read the financial report, we heard a couple of reports from ASG, and then we had a long conversation where we listened for two hours right. to public comment. Right. See, I, think, I, I, I appreciate it, that was good. I don't know what we railroaded through, no. well, specifically. I, I understand, there are times when we yeah. need to do a better job. And we're to, we're going to go back and do that. Well, the public comment should be at the end of the meeting because that way there we can see what you've discussed and what we object to. And before now, you're going to make us wait another month if you decide to have a meeting. Okay. okay. I, I, I hear what you're saying. Uh, you you well, do, but you're not doing it. Well, I'm trying to conduct the meeting. I can't have a. a well, you can conduct the meeting all you want. I'm going to ace. We're going to yeah, move on. I, I, I know. The way okay. you want. Okay. Thank you. Any other public comments from individuals? Okay. But well, mine's totally different from complaints about the meeting. I have a theory regarding noise complaints, and I uh, would like the opportunity to talk about it. It's uh, a little bit uh, off to the side in terms of looking at it. Go but ahead. basically, um, I have studied cycles of the weather, cycles of the solar activity. And I believe that there is an effect of, um, of solar activity on the atmosphere, which is just changing the prevailing winds on the airport, just enough to bring traffic more to bear over the neighborhoods. And I mean, I can a lot of detail here, and I'll gladly share it. I'd like a request to speak next month. But my main supporting evidence that there, there, there was a serious uh, subject way back when, this airport has two runways now. Originally, it used to have three. It was runway two and 20, which is now, you guys know, as uh, uh, taxiway Foxtrot. And I remember that being an active runway when I first started to fly. And people just don't plump runways down for the sake of putting a runway there. There must have been a reason, and that reason was predicated upon prevailing winds at that time. So if you put together the 11 year cycle, we've got people making complaints now 2008, 2009, and even going back to like the 1999 time frame. And I seem to recall the, the people making the complaints saying the same thing over again. Something has changed, something has changed. And everybody's going like, well, nothing has changed. That's not true. The solar cycle has come through. So if given the opportunity next month, I'd like to present my theory on that. And the possible solution to this is maybe we want to give reconsideration to reopening two and 20 turning it into a training runway, and that would bring traffic away from the neighborhoods. And no, right in my house. targeting here, I was telling you. But it would possibly bring traffic back more away from the neighborhoods. It was put there for a reason way back when. It was closed sometime in the well, mid to late 19, uh, 1990s. And it's, it's real, it existed, people did this. You know, maybe un unknowingly, whoever designed that runway then was actually reacting to the prevailing winds being caused by a solar minimum. So that's my taste of what I want to talk about and what I'd like to discuss in detail at the next meeting. I think it's interesting, uh, the theory that something has occurred other than just growth um, or resurgence of the industry. Uh, and we can be interested, uh, even from an engineering standpoint, um, we can definitely expand this conversation if you want. I think it would be worthwhile. 
Asa, come back to you. Anybody else? The reason why that runway existed was for the Navy to train pilots to land on aircraft carriers. That's why it was designed. And now you've made it a taxiway. But it is a regular runway, and that's what it was designed for in the, uh, I'm guessing, 50s, 40s, 50s. For training, for training aircraft to land on aircraft carriers. I'm assuming they, they, I was reading it today online, they, this, the Navy came back to the city in 1950. So it was exactly. That's what it was that for. War. Right. It was a it was a legitimate runway. It might be interesting to you know I have our engineers from ASG sitting here you know at some point you know and I don't know what it would take what kind of uh, you know long range planning I mean if it's even something that they would go but it would be a, a long term solution if it's viable well on itself that's all I can say. If I just make my closing comment. Sure. Okay. If you put the big pieces together the puzzle comes together and it starts to make a lot of sense. And what I'm putting forward here, and I'm not strongly suggesting, I'm saying please consider this. All right? You have airport noise complaints. It bothers me that people are unhappy. Okay, We should all be as happy as we possibly can. And the one thing that I've heard repeating, I mean, I've been here for over 20 years at these meetings. I've, I've gone through this round of noise complaints. I went through the ones back in 2008, 2009. I was even here when the airport uh, neighbors committee went crazy over the trees that were taken down. <laughs> and when they took the trees down, if you put the, the added traffic to it, that would certainly explain why they were very excited and energized. So it's, it's, it's real. And when they put that runway down, whenever they put it down, whoever put it down, the primary reason why it was put there, there was prevailing winds that determined it. So that's all I'm saying, and, and uh, if you want to hear it out, that's fine. If you don't, well. You know, we could expand this next, you know, at the next meeting. Uh, it would be interesting, I believe, and I, obviously I'll, I'll circle back with ASG as well. Um, again, it's, it's a huge project to contemplate the undertaking. What kind of, what kind of evidence the FAA, because ultimately the federal government pays for it every large dollar that is spent on the airport as far as construction, you know, evaluating, you know, it wouldn't be like. Well, if I may, there would practically be no construction costs. All that would be necessary, in theory, repaint the runway identifiers and maybe trim the trees on the departure end of what would be runway 20. <laughs> well, a bit more than that. Okay, <laughs> we're, uh, gonna, we're gonna move on. Can I, can I make a presentation? On, uh, and what we're gonna. I'll just look at everything, this is too much, this, Runs over from last uh, from last month, more or less. Okay. Now, not more quick. We were, we were not prepared for. I know, but it'll be quick. Minutes. It'll be quick. It'll be quick. Believe me, it's quick. I'll you give you three minutes. So right, three minutes. Let's get three minutes. No problem. Watch this. Watch this. That's <laughs> right. All right. This is the airport, of course. You have to take a look at. It. Sure. Take a look at the familiar. This is the most congested area all around the airport. Okay. All right. Here's your packet that was given to me. Okay. That you guys don't even follow right now. The other administration, and as a letter from Wayne Mike Lee, telling you guys to put up a sign, which never got done. Okay, I'm gonna save this one. Okay, I missed the letter. Didn't come with it. I remember having to tell me that the other administration didn't never did anything. Well, it's not true. Yes, this is not true. It's not true. It was. But go ahead. All right. Let's see. Uh, I'm gonna hear from Mr. Vitality. He was to the house more than three times. Okay. Check out exactly about ten times. Okay, they were right there about vegetation. They came over on a day that was cloudy. Okay, they couldn't, we couldn't see anything. There was nothing going on that day. So it's cloudy. We got to fly. I had fun in my basement and show them. Planes coming that uh, his father-in-law, his eyes almost come out of his head. And he saw the tape. They tried to tell me that they they were filming that all the runway. No, they not filming the runway. But that was them coming up and going along by the flying about the trees. You know, trying to say real low. Okay, that's what it was. I've got a lot of other stuff here. I don't want to take waste your time about that. Uh, uh, who's, who generated this? That, Mr. Vitam, who's chairman. Okay. That's all I ever did. Okay. I got a lot of them. He, did, he, he was pretty good. He let's see. I don't know what he did. Well, Tony, I'll give you this. I'll give you this. Tony, yeah. I, will, I will come here 
and sit at this table with you, and we'll go through this. But uh, this is not the, the okay, well, this I is not the to, forum for it. I don't, if you if you want, you, look, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm trying to help. You, okay? I, and I appreciate well, that because some historical it, perspective is not, not a bad thing. thing. Right. right. You got another, another thing here. We were promised no more than five in a touch and, uh, no more than five in the series of touch and goes. Yesterday he had seven or eight, four guys lose his head. Okay. He couldn't control. Them, okay. That's the problem, you guys. You got, you got to push him up more. Okay. You have a problem here. Okay. The guy that's in the tower right now, he's the one who was in the tower yesterday that, uh, that happened to him. The two ladies that are in the tower, they're pretty good. She's pretty good, and her uh, associate's pretty good. The other three, three guys, mm -mm. the wind's like about 3 say the, say the wind's 3 0 5. We'll have them on 2 7, okay? They leave on 2 7 forever, okay? We are getting bombarded. Davis is getting bombarded. If you look at these things here, Anthony Lane shouldn't be in the picture, okay? Excuse me. Yeah. Those who give it to me. And I've got more at home, I got another book. This is only the small book. Okay. I even got, uh, you, well, you remember, I think you guys remember, uh, I can't remember his name, Mr. Hutchison. You remember Mr. Hutchison, right? No. Well, you don't know, oh, yeah, I don't think you were here. That was a lawsuit you guys had over with. Okay, that poor guy, when you guys put that poor guy through, you cut his down. He offered me all the papers that he had, so all the stuff that happened with him. Okay, I mean, he told me anytime I wanted, I could have it. I don't even want it. Even, and then we got the one from the Country Trees and Davis. That guy already offered me all the papers. I'm gonna, I'm I, don't I, I, don't, I don't want to cut you off. No, no. I will, I promise you. I will come here and sit at this table. No, this we get something squared away. Can you fine. allow me to finish? Okay. I'm going to try to give you what you want, okay. at least from a, a listening standpoint. Okay. But this is not the place okay. to do I'm a not, deep dive. I into, understand, and I'm not trying to cross. No, I appreciate, I appreciate that one. Just okay. allow me to say thank you. You give me your phone number. Give me your phone number, and I'll call you. And I'll tell you when I'm going to come out here, and I'll meet with you, and we'll go through this. Put it down there. Ace, go ahead while he's writing uh, that. Just, just briefly, uh, since Danvis has been developing and everything, they have developed places like Anthony Lane and where Mr. Bencourt lived, where you could stand in his driveway when he was buying his house and see the runway of, of Runway 9. So all these new developments are the ones that are doing the complaining and everything, and it has nothing to do with the operation of this airport. Danvers is expanding and expanding greatly, and people are complaining after they buy their houses. And uh, I don't complain about about the noise, and okay. that's I just the way it is. Don't give me that bullshit, I don't. And also, I don't plan, but It'll be 28 years this year, I'll hold it for 29. I, I give it a time. We, we had a two hour meeting last oh, night, and, I, and I, 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 I appreciate yeah. your perspective as well. As this uh, you can see, Davis is uh, congested like crazy, man. It is. It is. And you, you watch the patterns of the runway, this area never gets touched. One of them never gets touched, man. Okay. Thank you, and I appreciate it. I hope everyone's been, you this know, been patient with house mine. never existed. Until until he bought it, and then he's sitting there looking at the runway, now complaining about aircraft and everything. All the so same type of person <coughs> that would buy a house on a lake and complain about outboard motors. <laughs> I okay. appreciate that. Hey, say, I appreciate the perspective. Okay. Thank you. Um, I wish you would have been here last month when we were here for two hours talking about a lot of topics. So yes, sir. We're gonna move on to. Um, Accepting of the minutes from last month. Everyone has had a chance to read them. Motion to accept, do I have a second? Uh, roll call vote. Commissioner Breen? Paul Breen? Okay, one abstention. Commissioner Henry? Um, yeah, I just admitted it was the one high level. Commissioner Denzel? Okay. But I did read the meeting. Okay. Minutes. Well, it seemed that they seemed. So you're voting uh, yes. Yeah. Sure. Say. Commissioner Trevor, yes. Commissioner Slicky, yes. Commissioner Mosier, yes. Okay. The uh, motion passes. Moving on to the uh, financial reports. Good evening. This is Steve Wadding, uh, providing airport assistance here from the AHG, and today's. Financial reports, this reflects our September 2022 numbers. Uh, right off the top of the sheet here, we have our fuel flow revenue, which shows an increase. Our September 2022 
actual full revenue was $9,041.80, showing an increase over the last September of 21 of $1,046.10. So it's on a positive note there. Uh, right below there is our traffic counts. Traffic counts uh, this September, as well as last September, very good for flying. Uh, this September of 2022 showed the traffic counts of 7,906, showing an increase of 470 over last September's 2021 traffic count. So we showed a positive, positive. And our landing fee revenue uh, for September of 2022 uh, shows 198 landing fees collected for a total sum of $18,000. $540.87, or shows an increase over last September of $3,013.48. So we're showing positive revenue increase with our fuel flow and land fees, and we're showing a positive traffic count with the good flying weather that's upon us presently. Excellent. Thank you. Anything else? Is, is this yours as well? Uh, I think that, that comes under the, uh, the financial. Okay. Well, let's do that. Uh, that. That we had for. We'll get your back there. I can just place mine. The news? Yeah. This one here? This one here, exactly. It shows uh, the operating revenue here. Uh, let's see. Year to date. Uh, let's see. We showed our budget right here of $5,556,138. A year to date expenditure of $136,438.79 uh, with encumbrances of $5,850.10 and the available budget for the remaining of this fiscal year of $425,549.31. So we're showing uh, a good position going into a, you know, fiscal year 23, which began on July 1st. Okay. Any questions from the commissioners? Okay. Chris from Airport Solutions Group. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Craig Schuster, Airport Solutions Group. Um, nothing really must change from last month, uh, so just a few quick updates. The master plan itself, we uh, submitted that the final final that they passed on when they put first in the final comments and expecting comments tomorrow, probably through the week ish. You know, uh, it gave it a little to but I think it's a couple days after. And those final comments, we just put them in, and then we're going to make it a final document. Okay. We're eventually, um, you know, I don't know, um, so we, one thing we'll get out is that airport layout plan, which will have to be signed by the airport at the end of the month. And that'll be, a, that'll be on record. Um, and you so believe point. that signing might occur in what month? Well, it depends, like, it depends on the comments to get back. If, if people have reviewed them, you know, for that fair or so hopefully, I say if, if they give me comments about it in the next month or so. Okay. That will be the signature on the little plans. So. And you gave them until the 12th of yeah, October. Yeah, just tomorrow. Just tomorrow. Okay. But I'm going to probably give them a couple of days if they don't get quite good to it. Okay. The, uh, the uh, perimeter fence, um, the noise modeling, that's just on here. We're just waiting for it to come to the mass dot to the airport to the to Wait on that. Which I did receive and I'm waiting for the confirmation. You did, I'm all the That they got put into the accounts. Nice, for both of them? I believe it was both, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> um, the, uh, like I said, one of the next projects, 2023, is going to be uh, uh, one of them we had listed with data collection firm, 1634, Taxway Echo. Yeah, can I, can I, if I can interject just for a second, mm -hmm. um, before you go into these, and with a little description, I would just like to, just to bring everybody up to speed about the CIP. Yeah, and that's going to end, but absolutely, because it, they have kind of changed, this project kind of changed since the CIP wants to be, right? So, well, minor, well, minor yes. It's still like minor, right. minor shift. Well, I'll just, I'll just let everybody know, and for Paul's uh, benefit offline, you know, we had the annual, capital in improvement program meeting with the FAA. It was all online. Uh, myself and Craig. And I wasn't there. I was on vacation. Uh, well, that's right. Well, yeah. Bob yeah. Mallard was on. Yeah. Steve was on. And about <coughs> six or seven individuals from the FAA all 
Yeah, and, and some mascot people. Basically, I, I, I sent to you guys the sheet, and that's all we discussed for the 45 minutes. It's um, the meeting um, basically goes looks at the next five fiscal years and you know the airport's wish list by by fiscal year, and we kind of discussed them. Um, I will say, if you look at uh, fiscal year 23 and fiscal year 26 and fiscal year uh, 28 are all runway and taxiway maintenance related, okay? Um, fiscal 24, there's no project in it at all. Well, we, we want a project, because again, this is oh. still, we, we have to revise it, because that project, the uh, permitting for the EA, the environmental right. assessment, if they wanted to split it out, they want the environmental assessment separate okay. permitting center. So that's fine. So half of one of one of the two that are under 23, one of them will be split into 24. Mm -hmm. Now I will say originally, if you look at a fiscal year 26, where they talk about the, the reconstruction of the runway um, with its heavy list of lift of 12 million dollars from the federal government, um, that was in fiscal year 24. But I asked the city, you know, the, the city was not necessarily prepared for you know, the $600,000 of, of the airport's contribution towards that $12.5 million price tag. Um, and whether that's influenced by you know, the airport manager being on leave, um, we just decided to push it back from 24 into 26. Uh, the FAA had no, no real issue, at least that they communicated with us about being pros or con. Um, so that's one thing we're looking at. I will tell you that um, the city, I, I was in City Hall the other day, and the mayor and the director of finance, Brian Ailes, were sitting outside having a separate meeting. I walked up and we had a little five minute conversation about the CIP, just for planning purposes from City Hall, because you know, there, you know some of these items, especially on the runway maintenance, you know, and even the snow removal and the snow removal building, uh, equipment building, um, would come out of our capital fund. Uh, so I had a meeting today with Brian Ailes. Uh, we spoke for 45 minutes about this, um, specifically looking at the, the reconstruction of the runway, uh, which hasn't been done in, in over 40 years, you know, outside of the patch jobs that we did four years ago. But uh, the, the life expectancy of the runway, um, it's come, it needs to be done. So the, I will tell you that the, uh, the city was fine with the, the prospect of the 625000 whether it be a bond issue. I, I spoke to Craig before that meeting. I called Craig and Bob Mallard, and we spoke just for a few minutes. You know, a couple other airports are having runway constructions being done. Uh, those municipalities, Barnstable, along with New Bedford, are floating bonds. Um, to finance the airports or the sponsors portion of the construction. Um, the city didn't seem to have an issue with the overall project or the timeline of it. So I was happy with that. And um, I will say one thing which came out of the, the, the meeting which I thought was quite interesting was the snow removal equipment. We had our eye on some new equipment. And unbeknownst to me and I assume anybody else that Congress has passed a, inside the bill, the funding bill, is buy American only, but there's no American manufacturer that makes this kind of equipment. So we're, we're like, well, well, what do we do? And nobody had an answer. So the money, we can't get the money because it's not going to be built by an American company. Even though, even though, let's say half of it is, it's assembled here, but it's, you know, global market is just... And then the other issue was the, uh, the cold storage building. Um, the FAA kind of balked at that. I can't recall exactly what it was. There was some issue with it, but but then that leaves the three maintenance uh, to the runway and the taxis and the studies thereof, um, which are probably going to happen for sure. And now, the last four items on Craig's report, so items done. four, five, and six. You're done. Are you sure? Thank you. <coughs> That's it. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. That's great. I turn it back over to Craig to say. Well, I don't want to say Unfortunately, I was on vacation, so I couldn't uh, right. comment on that. So. Steve was there. He had a nice contribution. We appreciate that, Steve, yes. uh, from your perspective as a pilot. But as far as discussing what the issues with the runway is, 
even with the past job, for those of you who remember, we did it four years ago. Mm -hmm. Was the construction actually four years ago, or was it paid? Was it, no, it's pretty much from where it came on, maybe a year or so. Okay. So it's been closed. But it was a patch job down basically just the center of the runway. The outsides of the runway is there's there are issues and large cracks and pardon me. Uh, so we we discussed you know is it something that could be delayed and it, re it really it, it needs to be done. The last time it was done it was over 40 years ago, so it's well in line with the uh, uh, need. So. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you. Okay. Craig, thank you for that very detailed report. It's one of your best, I think. <laughs> Thanks. Anyway, um, airport manager's report. Yes. Uh, since our last meeting, we had the U.S. Aircraft Expo uh, that was held on September uh, 16th and 17th. It was a very well attended event. It was an invitation only. Uh, the email that we received from Leslie Mogensen, who was the uh, uh, event manager of the whole program. She said that we ended up with over 273 total registrations uh, that actually showed up and, and came to see the uh, static aircraft that were on display. They had probably about uh, the tower report, they maybe had 30, 30 plus people that actually flew in, used the transit parking and then attended the event there. And it was, it was uh, as, as, as mentioned, it wasn't a public uh, event or anything, it was invitation only, it was very well attended, they were happy, a bit windy, but uh, very well attended. They had nine static aircraft on board, we had uh, one jet was a service vision, it's a single engine jet, a single engine jet, we had one, two, three, three turboprops uh, on board, and then the rest were um, single engine piston aircraft, as well as an amphibian, which is called the Icon 5, and with a lot of uh, insurance vendors and finance vendors for people that were interested in maybe purchasing these aircraft and even thinking of maybe basing the aircraft at Beverly. Of course, we do have a hangar shortage. People spending that kind of money look to put the aircraft in a hangar, so they're looking for hangar space. It was very well attended. Uh, let's see, uh, additionally, right now, we're having great fall flying weather, and our operations management uh, group with uh, Dave Muse and Dave Paris are uh, finishing up the mowing around the field here and wildlife uh, control and we're getting into the winter season where we're taking a look at all the winter equipment making sure it's functional it's oil changed and ready uh, to go um, and let's see checking all the snow equipment readiness additionally we're looking at the on-call snow plow upgrade so we have an additional list that we just have one of the Dave use but we'll have four or five other individuals who assisted us in the past for snow removal so we're reaching out to them as well as the city to you know make sure that they're on board and paperwork's necessary so once uh, we get to that position that we'll have them ready to go to the fields open so we have finishing up mowing wildlife control and snow removal equipment even though i hate to say that word but it's right around the corner yeah. Uh, yeah. we want to be prepared and ready now just, just to, um, i'm trying to recall in the past we had Dave, yes. and now we've hired the other Dave. Dave, right. You know, have Dave, new Dave last night. Uh, but beyond that, we, we haven't had more individuals on call, which I think is probably a good thing. We have. We've had three or four other individuals on call, and based on yeah. the need of the snowstorm, they'll be you know, up and ready, and they plow different areas. Uh, from not only Tom Sherwood, uh, we have, um, oh, let's Bill see, Fury. Bill Fury. Uh, let's see, there's, there's a couple of the Wayne, uh, Wayne Hathaway, and uh, well, that's uh, good news. Yeah, Marty right. Olson. So this, this they're, they've been on for a few years as seasonal. Yes, okay. as seasonal. So we, we rely on them, and they, they and we think that they're, they're both all going to come back where they're yeah. available. Yes, yeah. right. Wonderful. Okay. So that's it. Finishing up the grass and wildlife, and getting ready for the upcoming uh, snow flying events. Okay. <laughs> Um, anything else on the airport manager's report? That's about it. We, you know, we, went, we reviewed the CIP meeting, which went very well. We reorganized it a little bit based on uh, the, the city's preparedness for, for that large amount of money for the runway 1634, and that seemed to be acceptable pushing it back. You know, we just kind of keep a watch on the runway. I did mention the mascot uh, where we did push it back, come around this, this spring season. We hope to get it repainted because you can see the painting is kind of, you know, showing its age. 
Right. And where we intended to go with the reconstruction, if we had to kind of fall in line, it'd be, but if we're gonna push it up to 25, 26, we'll only have to repaint it. We want that center line and all the markings to be, you know, really onerous. I'll just add for the commissioner's um, um, benefit, you get to see a little bit of the inside workings of the federal government as the FAA and the large sums of money that are allocated you know, over a five year period. And one of ASG's concerns was that, well, if we, if we do not take advantage of, the, of this large you know, 10, 12 million dollars that the federal government is gonna spend on the maintenance of the runway in, in 24, and we push it back to 26, we were concerned that they might say, well, we, have, we you know, Congress has given us, you know, it's not always the exact same amount, but we've got our own budget cycle, and there may not be $12 million available two years from now. Um, and, that, and they also said that probably you know, somebody else would be jumping on moving their runway uh, project forward into, let's say, our own slot. Um, but the FAA didn't share that with us or you know those concerns yeah, they, didn't really come up right so that at least that was good at least we, but we never did get into an in-depth conversation about their funding cycle and they're not, right. they're right. not going to tell as us as they reshuffle their funds and everything right. that. so i mean as you can see you know obviously mm -hmm. we're only paying five percent of almost every single project uh, from the city's perspective and the state and the federal actually paying the vast majority of It just, it just kind of echoes that whole safety and operational that comes out of the master plan showing that 1634 is our basically primary runway and we want to maintain it in, in good condition, you know, at the top notch condition. I know I've had received numerous calls, what they call as a pavement strength. They're like, well, we're not quite sure about the pavement strength on 1634. Where back in the day, 927 used to be maybe the primary runway and had really definitive pavement strength. Where 1634 has a kind of questionable pavement strength, and as you get to larger and heavier equipment, and these are calls you get from operators. Uh, I have, I've, operators. I've had it right. So in other words, some of the larger jets have their own corporate flight department, which then dispatches. They they'll make a flight plan and dispatch for their aircraft to operate out of here. Right. And their numbers actually can be reviewed by the FAA. So once you dispatch the aircraft with such a passenger load and fuel load and you, you didn't follow safety protocol. So they could be called on that and their insurance better. So they, they rely on those pay, payment strength numbers. I will say that, and I was, I was happy to hear um, the Director of Finance, uh, Brian Ailes, today uh, re reiterate almost the, the same thing, saying, well, you know, we need to make sure that we keep the runway uh, at top notch so we don't lose or have a revenue impact. So he seemed to have, yes. from his many years, some exposure to what happens if, if pilots are choosing not to fly in here because the runway is right. Is, it's is not the way it should be. That pavement strength number isn't just what they want for their operation man manual that they then present for their operation flight plan, which then can be reviewed by right. the FAA as well as their insurance carriers, and then just comes right down to that big safety number. Safety is always of paramount importance. Uh, Commission, the management, and everybody here. Safety is always, and our air traffic control safety is our main function, and that's what we want to have that runway in, in top shape. But thank you. Well, thank you. Um, new business, <coughs> Air Bear lease review. Do we have uh, the representative from Air Bear? Uh, I think <coughs> uh, Air Bear sent us an email that they, they asked to maybe be repositioned for the November. Okay. The airport so commission meeting. Flight. Yeah, Beverly Flight Center and Air Bear both wish to be repositioned for November's meeting. Uh, they said based on their review, they didn't feel confident to, to make a, a full presentation to the commission, so they'd like that additional money to, to uh, report to you and make a presentation on November. So it, At a high level, is it just lease renewal? They're looking to do some constructions. Um, right, they're looking for improvements. Right, they're looking to improve the facility and change their business, so they like that presentation. And then I guess at that point there, I look for uh, the commission to review their lease and then recommendation for, for a lease going forward. And they're working with a contractor to put together what they're looking to do. Um, and Beverly Flight Center lease? Same thing. Same thing? Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Well, we'll move on to uh, the next topic, uh, the commissioner's comments, uh, noise complaint discussion. Um, after the last month, uh, it was a very interesting and I think enlightening conversation that we had with uh, amongst ourselves and with the public. So I, I know that uh, Aaron, you were you were interested in. Yeah. I'm going to hand it over to you and see where you want to go. Thanks, sir. Well, I don't know. I think again, I'm just really looking at the notes we took from last time and. At a high level, I guess I came away with a couple of high level things that we, I think, as a commission, need to do better with. And I think this is not, I think COVID didn't help uh, being, you know, legitimately without a uh, person on the ground here didn't help. Those aren't excuses, just circumstance that we found ourselves in, unfortunately, I think, over the last two plus years. But I think I came away with the distinct impression that there's a, a data problem on our end and that I think that the folks in the community um, that surrounds the airport are looking for answers to questions and, and we are unable to answer them because we don't have the information to answer them. And on top of that, I think clearly, in my opinion, there's a communication problem and we maybe go so far to say that that communication slash trust, trust issue and that we can't give them numbers. We're not probably being as transparent as we should be, and therefore there's a lack of trust, I think, between the community and the commission, and those are bad. Um, those are bad things. Um, lots of talk about the good neighbor policy. I will say, as a commissioner, I don't think we've ever actually put the good neighbor policy in front of us and reviewed it lately. That may have happened at the noise committee meeting. I know it's online and we can review it, but I mean, I think it's I think we should open it up and take a look at it as part of a future agenda um, to make sure that that was still something that we think is a sound document. That's a terrible pun to say sound. Um, we have a noise abatement policy, same thing. Um, and again, I think there's an interplay there, and I'll be totally candid. They may even be the same document, but we talk about those things as policies that exist, and I don't think commission has really put those front and center um, over the last couple of years. And then I, again, around communication, think we need to, I would like to see if we could do a better job of reporting on usage and the runways. I think we've seen some examples from other airfields, and again, we may not be able to get to where the abutters are looking for us to get, but I think we owe it to them to have a conversation about what we would wish we could get and try to work with our partners on the field to get that or get something close to that. Um, and then, so, again, I don't want to take up too much time, but I think I, one thing I would like to see, and Mr. Betancourt threw something that looks kind of like it on the table tonight, but I don't know if there is an official, you know, an official thing. Like, what is the touch and go loop pattern? Like, we've heard they've tightened the loop over the years. We've heard is there, do we have, does the tower have a policy about when it's 1634 and you're doing a touch and go, this is what we expect you to run for a path. When it's the other one, the 916 or whatever, you know, same thing, like this is what we expect you to run. You know, as a commissioner, I don't think I've ever been presented with that um, or seen that. And again, maybe it's fine as is and we just need to reinforce things. Maybe we want to look at that and change it. I don't know, but I, I just think maybe it's time to at least take a look at those things in a more formal light. And these meetings are tough. You guys want to jump down our throats. We don't get a chance to talk offline, so we're always surprising each other with this stuff. And it's so we lose a month because I'm going to put these ideas on the table tonight, and we're going to need to mull it over. So you know, I don't know how far we get on this at this meeting on 
some of the things I'm about to ask for, because these guys have never seen it, heard it before, and half of the ideas could be crazy, but that's just how the public process works. So anyway, so with that, I did have a few thoughts of specific things I think I would ask the commission to consider. Um, I think some of these can be implemented quickly. Some of them are more long-term or mid-term things. Um, but again, I, these are all generated out of, and I, and I typed them up so that I can share them with the commission afterwards, which might be a more productive way to digest them. So I'll just fly over them at a high level, again, with the puns. We, under good. we understand. No, I'm good. Forward to it. This is, <laughs> just roll with um, uh, I would like us to require the manager's report to have a specific, you know, airport, airport, airport noise summary, um, and that should include, but is not limited to, uh, total number of noise complaints, which I think we got this month, and I think we have gotten that sporadically over time, but we don't always get that. I think that's very helpful to us to have an understanding of the volume of complaints that we receive um, over the course of a month. Um, and then kind of where they came from. Um, and then again, the, the summary of what was the configuration for the month. You know, what we've heard a lot, I think uh, Mr. Betancourt said it, you know, we're always using one over the other. It's 90-10 or it's 80-20. I have no idea what that is. And I don't know that we can I'd love to get that information that might be from the tower. That may not be something we can get out of the airport manager, but to me, that's an answerable question. How, of the 7,000 landings, how many were on run? Right away. Touch up. I'd also like to consider requiring the airport manager to better display the, no, the noise report form on our homepage. Um, I think it's there. I have tried to point people to it. Um, it feels kind of buried, and you don't really get anything when you fill it out. It just goes into a dark space. You might get an auto-generated, we've received your thing, but it's not very customer friendly. You don't know <coughs> a human being has seen it on the other end and what happens to it after that. And again, I think that speaks to a little bit to the communication and trying to build a little bit of personality. And again, I understand, you know, there are some numbers here that you know we're just not going to be able to probably have a productive conversation with one or two of these people. Um, but I think there's many that probably just want a, re a reasonable response to a reasonable request might eliminate some of the problems. Hold on, sir. Um, the commission, I think, should consider requiring the airport manager to provide um, anybody with a badge a copy of our noise abatement program and receive. Uh, and receive an acknowledgement in return. You know, we need to know that they've seen it. We, we hear that the community, the pilot community, gets it and is doing it. We've heard from uh, the owners of Beverly Flight Center that they're trying to do their best to enforce our good neighbor policy. Um, but I think we can go another, and we're doing that in another aspect of our regulations that we've amended regarding other, other issues where we're requiring the acknowledgement of our leaseholders that they understand our rules, regulations, and expectations. I think we should do something <coughs> similar uh, with the good neighbor policy and the noise abatement uh, program. Um, I think, again, this one's a reach, but I think this is something we should consider over the you know, medium to long term. Requiring the uh, airport manager, and maybe it's a, a delegate of, or a liaison from the commission, to conduct maybe a quarterly noise meeting with the neighbors. I don't think it does us any good to just kind of have this, frankly, I'll be cynical. Did we only have the noise committee even crop up because we were in the middle of the master plan and we kind of had to do something to quell the noise, pardon the pun, from the community. So we did the noise group, we ran it for 18 months and then we shut it down and now we're on to business as usual. I think we need to do something to have that be a sustainable part of our operations, that noise is a priority for us and we need to make sure that there's a conduit for the community to find us. And I think something like a quarterly meeting would go a long way to taking the temperature down in these meetings and keeping this issue on our radar screen um, a bit more than it has been. 
Um, and this one's really crazy, but something to consider. Additional staff at the commission to someone to focus and help us with these issues and community relations and noise abatement and how we can do a better job of working with the community on that. I understand that's a budget, big time budget issue. Um, just something to consider that we don't have a lot of staff, which means our capacity to respond to the public is limited. Um, and maybe it's time we consider something to change that status quo. Um, again, just want to reiterate, I'd really like to see more information. I think the commission should be looking for that information on runway usage and touch and goes. Um, again, it would be great to see the usage splits um, between the runways and, and kind of identify those routes. Again, I asked kind of is there a map of that? You know, how do we know, like, if the prevailing wind is from the east, what runway is being used? And do, the, do we have a policy position that when it's blowing out of this direction, we expect the tower to be putting traffic on that runway. Uh, when it's coming the other way, we expect it to be on that. Again, I'm a little bit over my skis on all of this. I'm not an aviation guy. But I mean, these don't seem to be unreasonable requests. Again, I understand completely that we may not be able to get there with our partners. I, uh, but I think we owe the neighbors something to at least try to do a better job of communication and data collection um, and then finally, this one's an easy one, I hope. Um, I'd love to see the commission, I don't think this is a, a difficult one, that we would fully support the effort to switch to unleaded gasoline. I will say candidly, I never even knew, I've been on the commission for four years, I never knew we were flying leaded gas. That was news to me. Um, no problem, I'm glad to hear what I heard that night about the FAA itself seems to be on board with that switch. Um, so, I, I don't think that's a huge policy leap, but clearly um, that seems to be something that I think we could get behind. But anyway, so those are seven ideas. I can email you my little script that has all that stuff, because um, I know that was a lot to throw at you out of the blue, so my apologies for that, and thank you, Chair. No, no, no apology is necessary. This is a conversation that we need to have, and it doesn't need to be a short conversation because what we're talking about is are some heavy lift issues, you know, that are sensitive to our, our neighbors, and it's, the issue is not going to go away. Um, so we need we need to come up with something that is, I guess, uh, significant. It may not be a solution to the, to everyone's satisfaction, but you know, you know, inquiries need to be made. Education needs to happen, starting first of all within me. I mean, I, today, and I'll just you know dovetail onto this. I went on to our webpage today. I could not find the good neighbor policy. Literally, could not find it. And the only thing I did find was something that says uh, 2012. And I, and I, I like, I, I can't imagine that the good neighbor policy hasn't been updated since 2012. And the noise abatement policy has got, you know, airport manager Bob Mazzetti as the author. Again, and that hasn't been uh, changed. I also looked and saw that the flight school, the two flight schools have good neighbor policies, which are very short, um, you know, six or seven line items. Um, and, you know, they don't necessarily match up. I'm just curious what it might take to bring the two of them together to at least explain why their 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 uh, procedures are different. I know the two flight schools operate on different levels. And I don't, you know, you pilots can tell me. But so there that may be part of the reason. But so they're different. And maybe, you know, and Paul Breen, um, I hope he's still listening, he brought up the suggestion early on, uh, you know, of having with the, the tower, maybe a workshop, whether it be just with the commissioners or whatever, to discuss some of these things. Because uh, most of us are not pilots. So those of you that are, you know, you're you're in patience uh, on, on the non-flying <laughs> side of the house. Well, I have trying, any comments when we get there. But well, exactly. And and but those are things that I don't know if Paul wants to uh, speak. But uh, I see your name. But we're going to at least let the commissioners talk first. Uh, um, 
I still think Paul's suggestion of having something with the tower is probably a useful thing, uh, if nothing else, to educate us better. Um, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, I will say that, in, and I didn't get this chance, uh, when I closed the meeting last month, and I spoke for a couple of minutes, and one thing I wish I would have said, and you know, it always comes after, you know, to my, it is my understanding that, you know, this commission in the seven years that I've been here has never spoken about the policies of the tower. The tower, and, I, and again, my own, just as a, as a commissioner of, for seven years, is a standalone entity. We have nothing to do with the staffing. We have nothing to do with their procedures. They are guided by the regulations of the FAA. They're overseen by the FAA. And for me, to some degree, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to think that this commission and myself would try to and I'm going to say unduly influence the safe operations of the tower. Myself, I'm very hesitant to even venture to that. In the seven years that I've been coming to these meetings, I've been inside the tower one time just to see what it looked like. That's the involvement with the tower. Now, the airport manager and previous chairman may have had other exposures, but the commission itself has never gotten involved with the operations of the tower. And I respectfully say that I, I, you know, what they do as far as controlling the airspace around this airport is a monumental task, and they're trained to a level of proficiency, even though there, some individuals may think differently. But so I'm just, you know, I would love to be educated by the tower, but I don't know where else I would take it as far as you know what runway are you using today? That's not going to happen on, you know, from me. But that's just, and again. I'm uneducated at this point, but I'm just speaking my own mind here. Jeff, I know you wanted to throw your... Yeah, I think Aaron has a lot of good points that are easily addressed. We just need to take you know, some concrete steps. They're not big steps, but I don't think there's any reason that we shouldn't be making the noise report more accessible. I don't think there's any reason we can't have in front of us at the next meeting the good neighbor policy, if it's still stamped 2012, for just a review as a committee, you know, amend it as necessary, but most likely, you know, we're going to be happy with it. We want to just show that we're paying attention to it, support it. Those two things on the website, that's easy. We just need to bring it to a vote and make it happen. Now, personnel-wise, they may have to wait a couple of months because I think that we're kind of taxing ASG on a part-time oh. basis as it is. But I don't think that these things should be shelved. I think they should just be brought up. We could even vote on it on the interim. Mm -hmm. but we want to make it happen as soon as possible. I think the badges, you know, a mass mailing, and then just making sure that you have in their file that they've received it. You know, even if it's just a, you know, an email read, read receipt or something. You know, it doesn't have to be super fancy. We can do this quickly and efficiently. But you know, we, we disseminate stuff like that all the time as needed as part of having a database. Um, but to your first point about the standard procedures, and there's nothing left to chance with the FAA. Everything is dictated. The patterns have not changed. Yeah, well, no, but I mean, you know, I, I just like what I was going to say is what we may want to suggest is having somebody or some entity provide a presentation because I'm, I'm pretty sure that just looking at a couple of old photocopies there, there's some inaccuracies. Right. Um, you know, there are things that, that this airport is not the big fish in the sea in the area. I mean, I don't know how much non-pilots understand the effect that Logan has on everybody mm -hmm. in the area, inside the 495 belt. So there is defined traffic. It's left. It's left-hand turns, unless it's on the sectional charge, that it's right traffic, or at the discretion of the tower. Now. Piston aircraft are flying a thousand feet above the ground, or the tower is going to let them know. Turbine aircraft are at 1500, or you're going to hear about Or they're on an established instrument approach procedure, or a standard terminal arrival route, or a standard instrument departure. So this whole, they're flying lower, they're flying closer, they're, they're not. And if you want to push them out farther, that's not in the interest of safety. I see planes all the time that come over my neighborhood with ball green, right down the street from me. And they are 
way beyond gliding distance from the airport. If they lost an engine over my house, they're not making it out of my airport. That's bad piloting. It's not what the tower wants to see. They, they fly a pattern that's proportional to the speed of the aircraft. The little ones that are noisy and coming from the flight schools, unfortunately, are going to follow a smaller footprint around the pattern than the jets, which are pretty much getting eased right in, and you very rarely hear them unless they're taken off. You know, they're not at full power. They're established on approach, and they're coming in from miles away. So you say, okay, send everybody over to Wenham. Make them all do right traffic. Well, that affects the jet traffic, which then affects the bigger jets that are coming in the market, and it's, it's this snowball effect, right? So I just want to get out there that we should have a review of what everything is presently, but there is no mystery, and we can point the public to these resources that are publicly available, but I would think a 10-minute presentation would cover the four traffic patterns, the four standard traffic patterns here, and the good neighbor policy, and the designated practice areas, you know, I mean, the flight schools, the last time I rented with either of them, I was up over Plum Island doing maneuvers, so I, I don't know, if they're doing them within five nautical miles of this tower, <laughs> then there's a problem, you know. But even you, in that explanation, I'll take it on face value that everything you just said is fact. Something's That's probably wrong That's more than I've gotten in four and a half years. Yeah, so, so what, I'm saying, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that it's just, heard. again, it's communication. So, <laughs> That yes. sounds very plausible. But, but there are a lot of, there's a lot of myths. If I'm here and, not, and I don't well. get that intel, yeah. how is somebody on Anthony Lane supposed to know? I, that? I agree, 100%. And I'm, yeah. I'm just raising the point that it's out there. We need to yeah. do a better job presenting it. Yeah. So that could be something that could be on the internet. Maybe that's well. something. And that maybe is like a presentation at the end of the day that that's available online. There's maybe there's a touch and go page sure. on the noise thing just to explain to people what's happening and why they're hearing what they're hearing, the patterns that they're seeing. Yeah. At but least people will know what, what the baseline is, right. and then if they start, you know, seeing aircraft on the other side of the house and they're used to seeing them, or something has changed, they can ask the question. But I mean, and then also, you know, for the runway of choice is <coughs> three four. It's the biggest. It's the most equipped. It's the most instrument approach procedures. After that, it's it's the wind, literally. And I'm, I'm sorry that the wind blows westerly 90% of the time around here, but that's going to be two seven three four. I promise you. I'm going to allow you to address this. Yeah, I promise you. Just hold on. Paul Breen. Paul Breen. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I'm, I'm calling you out. Um, if there's any follow-up, because to your email of suggesting, you know, a tower uh, workshop. Um, is is there anything you'd like to add to it or? Uh, I, I would just say that uh, this is a positive conversation that the board sets policy. Uh, we've made it very clear tonight that we want to address noise. And maybe over the past couple of years that has not been the priority. Um, so I think this is a very good step. Uh, we could, you know, there's a vote in the group that we could do a motion tonight to put some of these actions in place, or we could allow all the uh, review them and, and potentially at the next meeting come, come with uh, a motion that incorporates most of the suggestions that, that Mr. Henry really. Well, I, I, I concur. Um, I would like to see yours in detail and, and give everybody a chance to digest the scope of what's on there and some of the other items that have been discussed you know, namely, you know, again, your uh, suggestion, Paul, is very good. And clearly, the need to update some of these, these documents and make it a little bit easier even for us to find on our webpage um, at the minimum. And then, you know, the flight schools. But I, I agree. I'd like, I'd like the chance to digest it and, you know, contemplate a little bit, maybe send a couple of emails in a non-quorum, you know, fashion, uh, and maybe even, I know we do have the subcommittee group, which is actually, actually, you know, it's for the, the citizens group, um, whether we as a, a commission need to have maybe a possibility of, of a subcommittee. There used to be, when I first came on, there was the revenue committee and there was the lease committee.
committee, and usually like three, three um, commissioners, maybe four, when we had a full boat of, of, of nine. Yeah. <laughs> when you could do those things, um, you know, at least to discuss things beyond a quorum situation and bring it back to the, to the, uh, the group. I, I, I wonder if that is probably a, a workable solution, at least um, to add to the arsenal of things that we can actually do to get things done. Because we know that this is not the easiest place to get things done. And then try outside of these meetings with the open meeting laws, what you can get done in a group is, is a, a challenging issue. Um, okay. Like, well, I think, I, oh, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, I'd like the commission just to take a look at what Mr. Henry's put together and maybe wait each of the commissions, wait which, which things we think we can do, we think or should do first. To try to, just to try to prioritize so that it doesn't just hang on for a long period of time with no forward progress. Right. I think identifying the priorities and some low-hanging fruit at least that we can get done, and then figure out what's the long term. If there are additional resources that need, uh, and even you know, uh, policy and just rewriting something takes you know how long you you know longer than you wanted to. Um, so yeah, and again, uh, to reiterate what Paul said, I think this has been a, the most positive and enlightening conversation <coughs> this commission's had in the seven years that I've been here, especially in light of our conversation with the public last weekend, or last month. Um, but never have we sat down and discussed it. And I'd say, and I don't want to be the old guy telling the old stories, but I mean, in seven years, the only thing I ever heard was, was um, um, Bill Mahoney you know, telling how he and somebody went to someone's um, living room and sat and had a conversation, and at one time that was it. You know, you know, it, it was just something. But clearly, I think last month was an eye opener for all everybody. Um, I don't think, unless you went to, I know that you know in the past presentations have been made in front of the Daniel City Hall that didn't go very well in time. Again, <laughs> right before my tenure. Um, um, so you know, we're we're opening a new chapter of this of this body. I'm going to give because we do have to go into executive session. And we're at the end of, of this conversation, but I'll I'll allow Tony. I'll give you at least three minutes. Okay, no problem. What runway nine? Why do they take a run runway nine? Why not that? Nobody on this nobody on this table has that answer. You just said that you got the clips all the time, so I'm trying to Well, say. again, I was like a pilot, things. but again. Right. Another thing. If you go back on the third wave, okay, the planes would because if you go fight away, you hit on it, you can tell how high the whole line has, okay? I mean I'm not trying to be whatever. We just, you know, really believe me, okay? The week before that you guys were flying with it. About 12 to 1300 feet, which is a lot better, okay? And on the 30th, you came down about 800 feet, okay? And all the difference in the world. And the patterns are getting shot, and then you brought that stupid, god damn helicopter in. That thing threw a 79 decimal from my house, that's where I picked up on, okay? In my back deck, I picked up 79 decimal from that uh, uh, Coast Guard helicopter that came in. Everybody complained about that. But they called my house, man. I was it came in this memory. That's the anti American. Twice that came in. No, I know, I'm not worried about it. So no, that's the anti American. Yeah, twice it came in, you know what I mean? And, but that, that's why I picked up 79 decimals off the back of my off the back deck, my back deck. I actually come down there. The end of the runway, but he was done by then. I don't see what the decimals were read at the end of the runway. I didn't get him in time, you know? He was already done. He did five hoops. Okay. People heard some downtown dam. I mean, a lot of people complained about downtown dam. Some believe I saw, I saw there was about it. I, was, I, was, I saw online people talking about oh. all military helicopters. I, I just, Ace, you have a comment? Yes, I think you should be in contact with the Danvers Town Hall because of the development going on in this town, okay? In Denver Square, there was a factory called Hot Watt. It's right in Denver Square. It's being torn down, and there's going to be 147 apartments put there. And on the other side, you've got Cherry Street, which is all new uh, condos, and now you've got Elm Street, which is being torn down <coughs> and uh, developed. And if you take off on runway 27 and uh, go on a left-hand pattern, you're going to hear from them, possibly. But you need to, uh, with all the new 
streets, Cotter Lane, uh, Rocky Hill, everything, they're all in the flight pattern, but you're not following that with the town. I think you should. I think you should find out where all the development is going on in this town. And if people bitch about it, they shouldn't have bought their house in the first place. That, that's my opinion. Don't move out of it's just like it's just like moving next to Route 95. So uh, I don't see, bitch about the you're, trucks. You're, you're, I don't want to say sing in the choir, but I understand the sentiment. But no, but you need to talk to the town and find I'm out where the they're developing. I'm so the you know. de development director. I know where the development is. Well, then you're not following it. Well, we're gonna. I'm just gonna. I, I understand. I understand. I understand this, what you're suggesting. Yeah. You know, yeah. And more contact with the city of Danvers. Beverly is going through its own issues of. If you want, we'll even go there. But yeah, we'll leave it at that. Um, we have no other topic on the uh, agenda other than going into executive session. I will say I'm gonna read this per the city solicitor's office. We will be. Ending the meeting immediately after executive session. Um, so I'm just going to read this. Is that what you're asking for, Beth? Does that make sense? Yes. Typical? I, I don't, I'm not sure what's on the agenda. Is that the agenda? The executive session rule. Yeah, that's. Okay. Closed session, not open to the public. Proposed executive session to discuss Massachusetts Commission against discrimination and complaint. Uh, against the commission and the city at all pursuant to the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, Open Meeting Law Exemption, regarding discussing litigation strategy, excuse me, um, when an open meeting may have detrimental effect on litigating the position of the public body and chair so declares during the public session and Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 221, a7, Personnel Matter, American Disabilities Act of 1990, 42 U.S.C. Section 12101. With that, I'm going to end the public session. Oh, and we need a roll call to go ahead, Commissioner. I was just going to ask if we do like a five minute recess to make sure that we get everybody flipped over. Because Commissioner Green needs to get in on the other. Yes. And, um, I'd like just five minutes. Absolutely. So, do I have a motion to end the, the uh, regular session of the commission? Um, Commissioner Gentile. I will second that. Seconded by uh, Commissioner Aaron uh, Henry. <laughs> Roll call. Commissioner Breen. Yes. Yes. Commissioner Henry. Yes. Commissioner Gentile. Yes. Commissioner Treffrey is yes. Commissioner Slitke. Yes. Commissioner Moser, yes. yes. Uh, the regular session is adjourned.